Yo, what's up everyone? Welcome to Small World and thank you for watching my first video. In today's episode, I'm going to show you how to make your own miniature air conditioners. These are great details for your dioramas, action figure displays, wargaming terrain, and just about anything else you can think of that has a miniature building, of course. I'm going to show you how to build and paint these in a variety of different finishes, some totally clean, some dirty, and some a bit rusty. So let's get started with the 3D models. I designed all of these AC units in Fusion 360, and in case anyone is curious, you can download these for yourselves in my Patreon. Link in the description below. This way, if you have your own 3D printer, or a friend that does, you can print these files for your own projects. Here are the fully supported models in Chitu box ready for printing, and you can see all of my print settings at the bottom of the screen for my Elegoo Saturn S printer. Each AC unit has the body of the unit, the vent, the propeller fan blade, and the bottom plate for the body. Now comes the tedious and time-consuming process of removing all of the supports. To do this, I'm just using a basic X-Acto blade. The most important advice I can give for this step is to take your time. The process is pretty easy and straightforward, but with that being said, it's also super easy to damage the print if you're moving too quickly. This is why patience is key. Delicate parts like the vent must be handled with care, and I use side cutters to remove supports from the front and back of the print. Supports attached to the bottom and sides can easily be trimmed away with the X-Acto. The propeller gets removed from the raft using the X-Acto blade, and the light supports on the back are easily removed by rubbing them off with your fingers. The bottom plate is trimmed with one swipe of the X-Acto blade and it's basically good to go. The next step is to remove those ugly nubs left behind from the trim supports and to do this, I just use some 240 grit sandpaper. These sanding sticks are awesome by the way and they're my absolute favorite. As you can see, just a couple passes with this bad boy, and the parts are super smooth, like there's no support there to begin with, which I guess is the point. I make sure to sand all the edges of the bottom plate, and test fit it to the body to ensure a perfect fit. To hold the bottom plate in place, I squirt out some super glue on some scrap card, and apply it to the inside using a toothpick. This way, there's no chance you'll see any messy glue on the outside. Any excess sanding dust can be brushed away using an old toothbrush and any stubborn chunky bits stuck into the cracks and corners of your print can be scraped away using a toothpick. And this is how it looks so far. The next step is to prep all the parts for priming and to do this I usually just take some double sided tape and put it on a wooden stick. Then I just place my parts on the stick one by one. I use both gray and white surface primer by Tamiya, gray for the bodies and vents, and white for the propellers. I just leave the propellers in the primered white finish by the way. For the actual paint colors, I use Tamiya lacquer paints, thinned down, and sprayed through an airbrush. My only goal is to get the parts completely covered while being sure not to go too heavy with the paint. I don't want to clog any of the details with paint, so I do multiple coats. If you don't have an airbrush, no worries. Tamiya paint and the spray cans will do the trick. Once all of the parts are painted and the paint is dry, I seal everything by using a clear coat by Mr. Hobby. This helps protect the color coat for the next few steps. I use some cheapo acrylic paint to paint the inside of all of the AC units black. The reason being is that this will add a nice contrast against our white propeller blade from behind the vent. And more importantly, this contrast will help the propeller blade become more visible. I use a dab of super glue to fix the propeller blade in place, and a few more dots of the same glue here and there are used to put the vents in place. This process is then repeated for all of the other AC units. And here are the fully assembled and painted units. They look pretty good right now. 
but they do look a little naked at the moment, like something feels kind of missing. So for the next step, I add some water slide decals, and I think this part really adds to the realism. I basically found some of these logos online, and I sized them based off some reference images. I bought some cheap, clear decal paper off Amazon and printed these on my home printer. From there, all I had to do was cut them out, soak them in water, and use some decal setting solution to fix them in place. I'd roughly put them in position using my fingers, and I'd kind of shift the decal around on the surface using a clean paintbrush. Once the decal was in the right spot, I press it down onto the surface using a Q-tip and soak up any remaining water. Sometimes the decals can flake a bit along the edges during the application. This can cause the logo to appear a bit torn along the edges. If this happens, you can be lazy like me and just leave it and use that to your advantage during the weathering process, but if it's too much for your OCD, then you can always just cut out and apply a new one. Now it's just a matter of repeating these steps for all of the models. After all of the decals have dried, I seal them in using a flat clear coat by Mr. Hobby. This will help protect the decals during the weathering phase. If you're only looking to make brand new, pristine AC units, then you can stop here. But for me, I'm looking to add some dirt, grime, and rest to these. I can't stress how important it is to use reference images of real life examples. Like, there's nothing more real than the real thing. And after doing some research, it can definitely be pretty eye-opening to see how dirty these things can get. Here are some of the enamel wash products I use for the weathering process, and I also highly recommend wearing a respirator, both when spraying the lacquers, as well as weathering with these enamels. First, I'll show you how to weather an air conditioner that's slightly dirty and looks pretty clean for the most part, and fortunately, it couldn't get much more simple than this. All I do is slap on a ton of the Tamiya black wash, like everywhere, and then just wipe away the excess with a paper towel. I just repeat this until the entire model has been covered and wiped with the wash. What this does is it gives the model a slightly dusty appearance and it also accentuates the cracks and crevices which highlights the details on the surface. The flat clear coat that we previously sealed these with also soaks up some of the wash due to the grippier surface and as a result the entire model will appear slightly darker. Check out the before and after. Next, I'll show you how to make a model that's more grimy looking. It'll be much more dirty with some streaking effects running down the front. Again, I start with a full coverage black wash as a base coat, doing exactly what I did for the previous model. Once that's out of the way, I break out some oil paints which is what I use for the actual streaking effects. All I do is I take some of the black oil paint and kind of stipple it on the surface of the model where the streaks start. In this case, I'm being mindful of my reference image and I'm concentrating the paint more towards the top of the model. Once it's applied, I dip my brush in some enamel thinner and blend the paint up and down to create fine streaks. I'm not necessarily trying to copy exactly what I see in the reference pictures, but the goal is to just get it close. Doing this, I make my way around the entire model. It's honestly just as simple as applying some paint and blending it with some enamel thinner. Oil paint has a long working time, so if you're not happy with the initial application, you can easily just wipe it away and start over again. Another detail I noticed in my references is that the vents became darker than the rest of the air conditioner. To emulate this, I take some of the black and raw umber oil paint and I smear it all over the vent. Now it's just a matter of doing some back and forth with the oil paints until you're happy with the result. And finally, we're on to the rusty model. I start by applying some dark gray acrylic paint where some of the rust tones will be. This is a chipping layer using an additive chipping process where you place the chips on top of the color coat. So I guess it's like the opposite of paint chipping in real life. This method has a few major advantages though. It gives you total control over the placement and size of the chips and any that appear too large can just be refined with a toothpick.
For the actual rust tones, I apply both of AK's enamel rust washes. One is lighter and one is much darker. Paying attention to the reference image, I start with the light one and apply it where I see rust stains in the photo. Once the wash dries, harsh edges can be blended with some enamel thinner. I tend to focus the dark wash around the chips themselves. Think of the light wash as staining on the surrounding paint and the dark rust tones as the color of the rust on the exposed metal. Again, this does require some back and forth, so I'm constantly applying more of the light wash, blending, more of the dark wash, blending again, and repeat. It can definitely take quite a while, but I think the results are totally worth it. Here's the final rusty model. It's not exactly like the photo, but it's pretty darn close. And those are all of the finishes that I'm going to cover in this video. I hope you enjoyed watching and that you maybe learned something. Here's some examples of other models that I made. All of them use the same techniques I showed in this video. These are all in 124 scale by the way. If you like what you saw, please consider giving me a like and subscribing to my channel. I'll be posting more model making videos like this in the hopes that you find these useful and that you make some of these for yourselves. Again, if you'd like to support me even further, please consider joining my Patreon. I'll be offering tons of benefits for my members, including downloads of these 3D models for all of the air conditioners you see on screen. I'll be posting all of my 3D files for my future projects there, and I'll be offering Q&A videos, early access videos, process pictures between videos, and much, much more. Anyways, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video. Also, here are some bloopers. To hold the bottom plate and to hold the bottom plate in place. Whoa, super. This super gold plus super glue, by the way. Again, it, this super gold. This super gold. As you can see, just a couple cat. Bro, why the. Why the fork in my stuttering right now? Okay. The next step is to remove those ugly... Dude, remove is a hard word to say when you're trying to talk semi-quick.